Hi everyone, this is Aaron for Zolotech, and we're going to be reviewing the HTC Thunderbolt today. The HTC Thunderbolt is Verizon's latest and top droid smartphone in that it is a 4G LTE device. There are other devices coming out soon that use the same technology, however this is the current and fastest when it comes to data. The screen on it is quite nice. It's a 4.3 inch screen that comes in by 480 by 800 resolution. It has a speaker on top here. You've got a forward facing camera. You've got your buttons along the bottom and on the top we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack your other microphone for listening and helping with noise canceling, that sort of thing. This little lip here is to pull the back off to so change the battery and the SIM card since it is a 4G device. This is your sleep-wake button or power button. On this side we have our volume rocker and all of these are really nice aluminum buttons. They're not plastic. They're quite nice. On the bottom we have our speaker or our microphone rather for recording your voice when you're talking on the phone. And here we have a stand with a little speaker grill behind it and this allows you to stand the phone up when you're listening or watching movies or listening to music or whatever you want to project the sound a little bit differently I guess on the back we have an 8 megapixel camera with dual LED flash let's go ahead and pull the back off and we can show you the battery just a plastic back but nice we have a 1400 milliamp hour battery that's in the back here and the battery provides a decent amount of time as far as talk goes, it provides six and a half hours and 330 hours standby time. However, depending on which network, 3G or 4G, you may not get a full day's use out of it. Down here is where your SIM card goes. Let's see if we can pull the SIM card out. It's got a little tray there. It pops in and slides down in. And that's about it as far as inside the phone, other than your micro SD card that pops in the top here. And this is a 32 gigabyte card included in this particular device. So quite a lot of memory here. It also has 8 gigs internal storage. Now a little bit more about the cameras on the phone. The camera on the phone, the forward facing is a 1.3 megapixel camera that would be good for something like Skype calls and video, that sort of thing. Not great for taking pictures. However, the camera on the back is a very nice, very good quality 8 megapixel camera that also records in 720p video. It does a great job and if you want to see that, I have a couple comparison videos I did between this and some other phones that definitely worth are definitely worth checking out as this camera is really quite good. The internal specs of the phone are quite good as well. It has a 1 gigahertz Snapdragon processor with 768 megs of RAM. And to give you a comparison, the iPhone 4 has 512 megabytes of RAM. And that's for things such as loading flash and that sort of thing, which this supports. It runs Froyo 2.2 and has flash built in. So any flash web page you go to will work just fine. The phone also supports Wi-Fi, B, G, and N, and has Bluetooth as well. It also has tethering capabilities. Let's go ahead and turn it on here. If you want to pay the extra fee for that, you can get 4G tethering from your phone. As you can see, the HTC logo comes on. Quite nice. We have a normal layout. We have home menu back search on the bottom. Wait for it to power on here. And this runs HTC's Sense UI, which is quite nice if you've ever seen it. As this boots up, if you wanted to charge this or connect it to your computer, we have a micro USB port here on the side that I didn't mention earlier, and that provides you with a connection to your computer where you can browse this for data or anything you want to just dump onto the phone, or you could use something like Double Twist to load all your music onto the phone. You can see it's loading up. There's a little bit of a storm going on here to say that it's the Thunderbolt. Screen is locked. Now I have this set up with my username from Google saying I've got a new voicemail, although the number is not assigned to me, so that's kind of odd. Let's go ahead and unlock it. We do that by sliding down, and as you can see, instantly the screen pops up. If you've used any other HTC devices with Sense on it, they are a little bit more sluggish than this one. This device feels very fast. When we, squ when we scroll from screens, it's pulling from 3G right now, as I don't have 4G in this area. However, during some speed tests when I was in the Rochester area, we were able to manage about 20 by 2. So that's 20 megabits per second down by 2 megabits up. Now, the UI of the device is pretty nice. It's pretty standard HTC Sense. As you can see, it says Liverpool, 72 degrees here, which is pretty rare this time of year, but it, quite nice. We have our camcorder, camera, things I've put onto the, the home screen just to make it easier to take pictures and that sort of thing. We have our mobile hotspot option that is placed here, and all of these things can be found in the app drawer here. 
But as you can see, everything seems to respond very quickly. We have simple things like brightness adjustment, Wi-Fi, that sort of thing. You can see it's quite nice. And if we hit home, hit home again, it will show us our recent applications if you hold home. <clears throat> and then if we tap it again, it will blow out and show you all the different screens. If we want this screen, we tap, comes in, we want home, we hit it again. And there we go. It has your typical notification bar at the top, which works quite well. And as you can see, everything is just really responsive on this phone compared to some other Android phones I've used. There isn't a whole lot more to go into other than that I think it's a great phone. And if you want Android, to me, this is currently the best phone available on Verizon as far as Android's concerned, unless the screen's a little bit large for you. The phone feels really quick. It's just, overall, it's so nice to use. It's responsive. It feels sturdy in your hand. But let's talk about a couple bad things. One of those would be battery life with 4G. A lot of people are saying they can't make it through a day without plugging it in using 4G. And I mentioned that a little bit earlier. But, you know, we're talking almost unacceptable battery life. You know, you start your day at 8, say, and you end up by 1 or 2 needing to have your phone charged because you're on 4G and it drains a lot of power. On 3G, I didn't experience that problem at all. 3G, I was able to get through a full day, get home, plug it in for the night, and I was good to go in the morning to do it all over again. The other thing I wanted to mention is the size and weight. Now, for some people this may not seem like a big phone and i have my iphone for comparison because in my hands it's hard to tell my hands are pretty big and the phone feels comfortable to me but to you here's the iphone to give you a comparison this is a big phone when we put the iphone on top of it you can see it overlaps quite a bit on the top and side on the size sidewise the htc is a little bit thicker it feels heavier although not by a ton, although it is heavier. However, you may like that and want a more substantial phone. I think it's pretty sturdy. Overall, I don't think you're gonna have a problem with that, but it may be a concern for some of you. But overall, I think it's a great phone. When someone asks me my current recommendation on Verizon for a device that has Android on it, I always tell them the Thunderbolt lately. If they want an iPhone, obviously I say iPhone, but if you want Android, I would go with the Thunderbolt. It's just a great phone. Like I said, it's hefty, it's built well, it has 4G if you have it. If you have tethering, that's even better. You can tether to your uh, Zoom or iPad or whatever you want to do or laptop and you'll get 4G speeds. It's like having a modem at home, a cable modem. It's that fast. My wife actually used it on uh, on the road and said, it feels as though I'm at home when I'm using it, the Wi-Fi hotspot, when we were in an area that had 4G. She just was very impressed with how quick it was on a laptop tethered to it. It's that good. So definitely, if you have 4G in your area, it's almost no competition unless you are set in on iPhone and need to have that iPhone experience. If you want something that tethers and is super fast on data, Wow, this is just really, 4G speed is really impressive. So we can't wait to see more 4G devices, such as the Droid Charge and other things coming out. But overall, like I said, this is a really nice phone. So if you have any questions, though, that I haven't answered that you have about this phone, please feel free to ask in the comments below. This is Aaron. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.